Welcome back everybody. Uh, this video we're going to talk about transformations of two-dimensional objects, but how they are handled on the coordinate plane. Uh, the main thing to know with the, some of these examples is um, the question is going to be asked which transformation will produce similar but not congruent figures. Similarity means the same shape but not the same size. And the key element of this when dealing with these transformations, whenever an object is dilated, that means make it it's made bigger or made smaller. That produces a similar image. All the other transformations just basically keep it the same. It may be reflected, it may be translated, it may be rotated. But dilation is the only one that produces similar but not congruent figures. So looking at these three scenarios here, uh, A, triangle MNO is reflected across the x-axis and then rotated 90 degrees clockwise to form triangle MNO double prime. That will not work because there was no dilation. Look at D. Triangle MNO is reflected across the y-axis and then rotated 180 degrees to clockwise to form triangle MNO double prime. Again, no dilation. It is not similar. Try look at B. Triangle MNO reflected across the x-axis, translated 9 units down to form triangle MNO double prime. Not working. The one that works is C, triangle MNO reflected across the y-axis and then dilated by a scale factor of 1.8 to form triangle MNO double prime. So the dilation here tells us this was in fact a production of a similar image. Let's look at another one here. Which sequence of transformations will result in a figure that is similar but not congruent to the original figure? Again, we are going to look for the dilation. And looking at the two uh, examples here, look at B, dilation with a scale factor of 2. C, they reflected across the y-axis, then they dilated it by a scale factor of 0.5. Those two are producing our desired result here where we get a similar but not congruent. And again, we're just look for that keyword, dilation. Look at another example here. Which transformation will produce similar but not congruent figures? Turns out three of these end up being the right. And again, we're looking for the dilation. Just look for the word dilated. MNOP dilated by a factor of one half and then rotated 90 degrees to form the new figure. Trapezoid MNOP is translated seven units to the right and then dilated by a scale factor of five to form trapezoid MNOP. Forgot the P there. Uh, double prime. C trapezoid MNOP is rotated 180 degrees clockwise and then reflected across the y-axis. Don't see the dilation happening in C, but again we see it in D here. Trapezoid MNOP dilated by a scale factor of 18 and then reflected. Three correct answers here everyone. We have A, B, and D. Gives us similar figures because they were dilated. So look at a visual here where we're just going to complete the sentence here. So we have two triangles, ABC and DEF, and obviously uh, we have some trans transformations going on. First of all, it looks like it was reflected across the y-axis, and it even tells us what else happened. There was a translation of one unit to the right, so it shifted one to the right, and then three units up. Dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of what? Now, con determining the dilations, pick a measurement on the triangle about the base of each one. So the one on the left, the original triangle, that has a distance of 1.5 spaces. And this one has a distance of 3 spaces. To find the scale factor, Just take the second measurement and divide it by the first. The second one is 3, and I'm dividing it by 1.5. 3 divided by 1.5 gives us 2. Scale factor of 2. The second triangle is twice as big as the first triangle. And then finally, we have a transfer, double transformation. Let's read through it here. Parallelogram JKLM has these coordinates. Parallelogram JKLM prime has these coordinates, 
and parallelogram J, K, L, M double prime has these coordinates here, which transformation describes why parallelogram J, K, L, M and J, K, L, M double prime are similar. Here's all possible, so it's a big multiple choice question here. Well, to determine the scale factor, um, first, let's just see what's going on between the first two. Like, here's the first instance of the parallelogram. Here's the second. And we're going to look at the coordinates from there. Look at all the coordinates. Started out negative 8, ended up negative 1. Started out 16, ended up 2. 8 and 1 show up again. 16 and 2 show up again. And we can just go down the line and see that even on this last one. Negative 8 and then negative 1. Following the rule for scale factor, any of those second numbers divided by the first, so down right here, negative 1 over negative 8, that is going to leave us with a scale factor of positive 1 8. So our spot, scale factor is 1 8. Notice all the 2's and 16, 2 and 16, oh, negative 1 and 8, 2 and 16 again, it all reduces to 1 8. So that tells us our scale factor is 1 8, and we can see a couple choices there, A and D. But then to see what happened on the last transformation from 2 to 3, let's look at the coordinates there. All right, I see negative 1 to 3. Looks like the y coordinate stayed put. Uh, let me change colors here so it shows up a little better. So again, negative 1 to 3, y coordinate stayed put. 1 to 5, y coordinate remains the same. 2 to 6, y coordinate the same. And 0 to 4, y coordinate the same. Each time the x coordinates are getting added 4. And, and on the x axis, that means we move to the right. So we need to see the one that was dilated by a scale factor of 1 8 and translated 4 units to the right. And it looks like D is the winner here. Scale, there's our dilation, scale factor of 1 8 and 4 units right. And we got that by studying the coordinates themselves of all the translations. Look for the patterns there on problems like these. All right, that's it for our examples here about dilations in this coordinate plane. Thank you for watching.